Well, the most important issue is what is done with the dialogue because underlying this whole procedure, and not just today, but the previous report that PBL has been put together on the future of nature, is the sheer urgency of the situation. The threat of the fitness check and the possible reopening of the uh, legal protection conferred by the directives, the rate of disappearance of species and habitats, which continues undiminished, the huge under-resourcing of the sector as a whole, how that is faced and more than any previous time conservation needs to be underpinned by an effective philosophy and one that reflects some of the newer technical advances and some of the newer sectoral approaches that it should be operating the issues like how it deals with the enterprise agenda the socio-economic benefits of nature but really gears those up in support of what it's trying to achieve. And uh, those were partially dealt with today. There were an awful lot of issues dealt with today. Uh, it's difficult to single out one or two. The critical issue from a PBL perspective, I think, will be to make sure that there are practical recommendations coming out of this. It's not simply a dialogue of four highly competent philosophers. Uh, uh, otherwise, I think the process will be chasing its tail, almost for its own sake. This needs to be produced in such a way that it empowers and improves the overall approach of the conservation sector. One or two points of view. I, I think what would have been useful in a sense, um, and it was a very well managed day indeed and very well facilitated, was to look at the link between people's personal behaviour and their personal outlooks and if you like the whole global situation and relate those through all the various levels of decision taking and types of organisational interaction. That sounds a little bit complex, but I, I think that vests it more in, in, in practical outcome. Um, there were one or two interesting elements of personal psychology that could have been included. Uh, it, it's more of a, of a personal hobby horse. But there was a lot about the physiological and the ecological relationship between the sector uh, and, if you like, the rest of the world. I think the psychological aspects are also hugely important. And at the end of the day, man is a primate with a moderately well-developed sense of self-awareness. But our behavioural traits, so many aspects of the way we are, actually derive their origin from our wilderness backgrounds. If we just go back 10 or 15,000 years, and in evolutionary terms, that's the blink of an eyelid. And that says an awful lot of very interesting things about how we should be pointing future philosophy at all levels. At personal level, in terms of people's disconnect with nature, nature deficit if you like, and how restoring that can bring enormous personal as well as societal benefit, particularly in tackling some of the inner urban social issues. At community level, I think it can help to re-establish some fundamental cultural identities which are missing as communities get more and more homogenized and more and more dominated by a, computer, uh, a commuter ethos. And I think at national level, even if you look at the issue of the retreat of some of the major religions and the moral and spiritual vacuum that that has left in its wake, that is a space waiting to be filled. And in so many respects, the values conferred by nature can help not to replace that, but to supplement it, to tease out its real values and see what impact and meaning those have in people's everyday lives.